My neighbors actually, because we were on vacation, were calling me and texting me saying, what is going on at your house? There's people in a line down the block. I feel bad for the people that bought homes over the past year because they're the ones that paid the very elevated prices. So for someone who- I mean, housing more broadly, do you believe it's in a bubble? Absolutely. Look, I think we're in an omni bubble. I mean, so the U.S. home crisis is forcing thousands of aspiring buyers into grueling, often risking bidding wars, raising questions about whether the torrid housing market could. So, folks, why didn't the market crash? Why are all these gurus that were talking about market crashing are all of a sudden wrong? They've been talking about it for the past nine months, and so is the media. So, in this video, I'm going to break down and show you why and what are the factors that cause the real estate market to go down or go up in this case. And secondly, what you should look for when you actually are ready to buy a house. This is the worst market to buy a house. And why? Because this is a seller's market, folks. It's a seller's market. So if you're looking for get a deal in this market, good luck to you. You're not gonna find any deals in this market, and I guarantee that. If you look at the stats from Redfin and Zillow, you will realize they're all saying that the highest price of the houses have already toppled, right? So it's not gonna keep going higher. But that's not to say you may not see an increase at all. You know, these people from Zillow and Redfin have a lot of data. So they're very smart people and they're telling you that we can see the data, we can see the trends. Millennials are buying houses, who else is buying houses? So they can see the trends and they're telling you, guys, calm down. Market is not going anywhere, okay? If you want me to summarize the entire video in one word, I will tell you this is the worst time to buy a house right now. If I was a realtor or someone, I would tell you this is a great time to buy. Buy right now. The prices will keep going higher and blah, 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 blah. And the rates will rates are lower, which is all kind of true. Rates are lower. But that's not to say that the rates will increase and the prices may come down. So if I were you, I would wait. But in this video, I'm going to convince you why you should not buy a house now or in the next six months. You should wait till 2022. Now, if you are desperate to buy a house, if you have to have your kids move in a certain location or a schooling and vice versa, and you just can't wait, I will also give you some of the very handy basic tips that you can follow to make sure that you are covered in case the economy goes down south, in case the, the housing market goes down south. If that interests you, stick around for more. If you like the content, smash the like button, show some love for your boy AK. Okay? So to understand what brings down a real estate market or what causes it to go up, which is recently the factors of lumber prices going up, materials going up, inflation is, is going up. So all those factors are contributing too. And the demand is high, right? Demand is high because millennials are buying houses, they're in their 30s, all those factors. But to understand really what causes the real estate market or the house prices to go up and high, you have to look at more than real estate, okay? Economic factors all over the world. For example, we have forbearance in factor, moratorium, you know, obviously ended recently. So that's a factor. Uh, everything is, is, is expensive now. Gas is expensive, eggs are expensive, walnuts are expensive. That's gonna have an impact, right? The builders can't build fast enough because guess what? The price of building a house has doubled. You have to look at that factor. You have to also look at the stock market. Is the stock market doing well? You know, are people spending money there versus in the real estate market? Okay, are investors pouring their money in the real estate market or not? You have to also look at uh, what the government is doing. Are they spending in housing? Are they causing people to buy houses? Are they have incentives and programs to promote housing or purchase of housing, which I think Biden is kind of doing? I think Biden has also promised $15,000 for first time home buyers. So look at all those factors and more to understand, you know, how real estate market will pan out. There's a shortage of labor. If you notice, you call Chase Bank or, you know, uh, Wells Fargo, anyone, there is poor customer service because there's shortage of labor. You know, if you look at my video and I talked about the great resignation, why people are not working or going back to work. So that is also a factor in real estate prices being higher right now. Now, why do I think that the real estate prices will not continue to go higher is because I follow the data. The Federal Reserve keeps buying mortgage-backed securities, but they can't do it forever. They have finite amount of money, okay? So that's gonna stop soon. Now, what's gonna happen is also, there's actually a graph that I wanna show you, which shows that if the rates keep trickling up in future, in near future, they're not doing right now, but if they do, then house prices will topple down house prices will slowly start to readjust. There will be no market crash, let me say it again, okay? 
read my lips, no market crash, but there will be a market adjustment. When that adjustment happens, you know, people may falter on their moratoriums, people may not be able to pay their mortgages, some people may lose jobs if the economy goes down south. Right now, the economy is great. So nobody's gonna sell you their house for any price cheaper than the market rate. But in future, within the next six to nine months, that may change drastically, and you wanna capitalize on that, folks. You wanna buy a property that is a good deal, like pennies on the dollar. And the, those deals will be had in future once the interest rate starts to go up. So you wanna follow the graph of interest rates. You wanna look at if there are any foreclosure increasing in your property, in your, in your area, in your city. You wanna follow those trends. If people are falling behind in their taxes, you wanna follow that. You wanna look at inflation, if the inflation keeps increasing or decreasing or is contained. Those factors also affect housing prices. In the good neighborhoods, the market is, is hot right now and will continue to be hot. It will be hard to find a good deal. But in the not so good neighborhood, you can still find deals right now. That will not be the case when interest rates start to trickle up. And believe me, Federal Reserve cannot wait to increase the interest rate because the investors who have invested that money and bought those securities. I used to work for Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae as a consultant, and I know how the, how the pools of funds that go from bank to bank and all the way to the Federal Reserve, and how they back up the loans and guarantee the loans. So, all that to say is, this is a bad time to buy. Do not buy a property right now. Then make your move. I promise you, you can find a great deal in future if you do these things and you figure these things out. Another thing to keep in mind, folks, is that Americans are spending money like crazy. Why? Because they're getting COVID checks. They're getting, you know, these extra PPI, PPI loans and, and vice versa. And the market is thriving right now. People are investing in crypto and other markets and people are making money. Americans have spent 900 900 more billion dollars since last year, okay? This is post-COVID, folks. So you think market is gonna crash anytime soon? I don't think so market's gonna crash. It will never crash anytime soon because people have so much money, so much buying power, and that buying power will continue. So look at those factors as well. Are people spending money? Are people not spending money? When people stop spending money, that's when the prices also go down. So keep that in mind. Now. If somebody has a house right now and you want to sell and you're compelled to sell, where are you going to go? Because the moment you think you're going to make a few hundred thousand more in your house, guess what? Somebody else is going to tag that price and then give it back to you. That means you will not save any money. You're, pay you're paying $200,000 more for your house that, that you sold your house for. So there is no way to get out of this. I am buying a 10 package investment deal of 10 properties up in Maryland, but that's a whole different set. Why am I buying that? Because those properties are giving really good rents, okay? That's for cash flow purposes. That's not for me building another million dollar house. If you want a good deal, this is not the market to be had, folks. And I keep saying that because I wanted to get in your head right now. And the reason being, you know, that rents are going up. Prices are still high. People have spending power. There is no chance of crash happening. And the crash will not happen anyways. Market will self-correct. That may happen. Now, if you are adamant at buying a house, if you have to buy a house for whatever reason, uh, you may have to have your kids go to certain school, you may have some other financial constraints, you may have some money sitting in the bank and you wanna use it, and vice versa. That could be, or maybe you have, may have moved here from a different country and you w must buy a house right now. If you do, I can show you some ways and some best practices you can use to buy a house. So number one, make sure that you have at least some reserve money for the next six months. So live your lifestyle for the next six months before you buy a house, especially if you're a first time home buyer. Number two, okay, if you wanna buy a house in this market, it's a seller's market, be ready to pay top dollars for it, okay? Make sure that your total mortgage, including taxes, including insurance and all that, is 30% of your total income. So if you're making $10,000 a month, you can afford a $3,000 mortgage payment, okay? Number three, also make sure you set aside some money for reserves for a few thousand dollars for anything that's gonna break in your house. For example, toilet, plumbing, heating, electrical, a pipe might burst, so it may break down. What are you gonna do? And those things break down every 10 to 15 years. They have a life cycle, so keep that in mind. Also, home maintenance costs. Keep that in mind, especially if you're a first time home buyer. You know, home maintenance is not easy. You have to do cleaning, okay? Uh, you have to do gardening, and those are extra costs that add up every month. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is that you should, and I recommend highly, 
put at least 20% down when you're buying a house. Why 20% you might ask? Because you could do 10% or 15%, but then you're putting yourself in a financial constraint, owning a house that you really can't afford. The good formula is 20%. Another tip is to stay in the house as long as you can, so you can offset the cost of losing money in case the house prices go down. And be ready that your house that you may buy for $500,000 right now may be worth four seventy-five dollars next year. Aha, so I forgot one more important thing. Be ready to pay hefty property taxes because the prices are higher and they keep going up. Guess what? You're gonna have to pay more and more property taxes because the county is very smart. They're gonna charge you a lot of money for property taxes and you better be ready to pay that taxes. So that's an extra cost. So if you're, if you're adamant in buying a house, if you can't wait and don't wanna take my advice, that's totally fine with me. Be ready to make sure that you can pay all these extra expenses in addition to your mortgage payment. If you like the content, smash the like button, show some love for your boy AK, and subscribe and like if you like the content. Again, I'm giving you honest, unbiased opinion. Uh, this is not influenced by anybody but the facts and the data and the trends in the market, which I love to study and read. And I, I want to present that information to you so you guys can also be knowledgeable and not fall for these, you know, burning houses, thumbnails, and people are clicking on and somebody's saying, Yesterday, Stephen Graham was saying the market is crashing, you know, we're all going to hell and today he's saying, oh, why is the market crashing now? So they keep making these videos just to fool you and basically, you know, have you click on their thumbnails because they know that the public is infected by what they watch on TV or on YouTube. So be careful where you get your advice from. Uh, another strategy you can also think about is maybe you can rent. Sell your house right now at the top dollar price. Maybe rent for a year or so, you know, and see where the market goes and then make your move. Because there will be a time, folks, and, and real estate is very cyclical, okay? It's very cyclical. There will be a time that foreclosures start to happen. Short sales will happen and you can then snatch a deal. So you want to be in that position in a striking distance, right, where you can strike when the iron is hot. And and the iron is hot, as I mentioned to you, is when the rates start to climb. So you want to catch, you don't want to catch a falling knife right now. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. You don't want to catch a falling knife. You want to catch, you know, the market when the rates are climbing and the house prices start to trickle down a little bit, okay? With that, thank you very much for your support again. And uh, much love for you guys. I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye.